This is going to be a really quick tutorial to go through some of the Photoshop material that we looked at in class yesterday. And um, it's basically what we're aiming for is to do a composite image, kind of like what you're seeing here, uh, where there would be a line work drawing that's sitting on top of a tonal drawing. And it would be made up of a couple layers, so a tone layer and then a line work layer, and the two sitting um, one on top of another. And the way that we'll do that is that you should have the two scans. You should have uh, the line work scan and then a tonal scan, something kind of like this. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, get the orientation right because um, the scan, it might come in a little bit off. And we can do that by pulling a ruler down from the, or pulling a guide down from the ruler along the top. And putting that in, and you can see if you zoom in, uh, there's this light blue guide right here that we can use um, to get the drawing oriented properly. So what we'll do is uh, go up to the select menu and do select all. And then go up to the edit menu and do a free transform. And these handles come up around the drawing. And if I go to one of the corners, it'll give me a little rotation um, kind of uh, icon. What I can do is start to rotate the drawing. And then here I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard um, to nudge the drawing to line it up with that guide to make sure that everything looks good. So that looks pretty alright. And then I'll hit enter. And so now the drawing's been rotated and I can go up to select, deselect. And then the next thing, and I'll, I'll just mention, um, I've got this history window open, so if you ever need to undo something, it's really easy. You can go up to Window, make sure that History is shown, and then this will keep track of everything that you've done. So if you ever want to go back, you can just click your way back through that, and then you can go backwards and forwards. So we've got the rotation. Um, I can take the guide away now, bring it back up into the ruler, and it'll disappear. And in the background, you can see this light sort of tone from the paper that got picked up in the scan. And we want to get rid of that. So what I'll do is go up to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And here I can start to eliminate some of that um, by sliding this bar that's on the right to the left. And that's going to make some of the paper tone go away. And I can take this one on the left, which is kind of for the dark tones, like the line work. I can turn that to the right, and that's going to make the, the lines read really well. So I'm going to zoom in using the Control Plus and Control Minus. You can see that there's still some paper visible here. So I'll just go a little bit more to the left. And that's going to get rid of that. And then if there's some leftovers, um, it might be easiest just to go to the Eraser command. Oh, hit OK. Go to the Eraser and you can just get rid of that that way. So now we've got a really clean black and white drawing. And then we can do the same thing for the tone drawing. Um, select all. Bring down a guide. Go to edit, free transform. Get it lined up. Hit enter, select, deselect. And again, you can see the big difference between the tone that was picked up in the scan versus a true white. So we'll do, I'll do a um, levels adjustment again by going to image, adjustments, levels. Take this one on the right, kind of slide that back. Take the one on the left, slide that a little bit forward to get the dense blacks. And that looks about right. Hit OK. And then what we want to do is bring this and put this on top of the other image. So I can cut it and paste it out of here. Go to Edit, oh sorry, Select All, Edit, Cut. Open up the tone drawing and then do a paste. So now you can see on the right in my Layers window, and if that's not open you can go up to Window, Layers, and it'll show up. I've got the background, which is the tone drawing, and then I've got the line work, which is sitting on top of it. And I can 
make the line work invisible by clicking on this eye. It'll disappear for a minute. So what I want to do is I actually want them to be, rather than having this tone drawing on the background, I want to put it on its own layer. So I'll do a select all, cut, paste, and you'll notice that it drops onto its own layer. So now I've got a white background. I'll get rid of that guide. I've got the tone drawing, and then I've got the line drawing. And the trick here is to make the line drawing read in such a way where its white isn't blocking out the drawing behind. The easiest way to do that is to go up to its layer properties, which are right here in the layer menu, and switch it from normal to multiply. And suddenly anything that was white becomes transparent. If we zoom in using Control Plus, I can take this line drawing and I can try to match it up using the nudge command, using the arrow keys on the keyboard. I shift it around a little bit until it looks like things are pretty well lined up. So that looks pretty good. And then because I've got a white section cut and I want to have the ground be white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the tone layer. I'm going to use the marquee command to select all of that ground that's dark. And then I'll hit delete. So now I've got this continuous white section cut through both the ground and the building. And then I've got tone for the environment and the interior of the building. And then what I want to do is, so that the line work reads a little bit more clearly, is take the tone layer and turn its opacity down a little bit. So here I'm going to turn it down to maybe 50%. See how that looks. Maybe somewhere around 60. So around 60% opacity for the tone, and that's going to help the line work read more clearly. So now I've got this kind of faded out tonal layer, a really crisp black and white line layer. Then I've still got this kind of imperfection up here um, from the rotation. So what I'll do is I'll take the marquee command, the marquee tool again, and just crop this by selecting what I want, going up to image, crop, and that's going to get rid of all of that. And then the last thing to do is to lay this out on an 11 by 17. So we'll go up to image, image size. I've got a 300 DPI image. Um, and right now it's about 10 and a half inches across. I want to make sure that the resampling is off. Um, so that what that'll do is keep the relationship between resolution and size. I'll change the width to about, let's say, 15 inches across. And notice that my resolution goes down to, in this case, 200 or so. And then I'll go back up to image, change the canvas size to 17 by 11. And this lets me see how it's going to lay out on an 11 by 17. And now what I'll do is go and save it, do a save as, um, call it uh, final. To save it as a TIFF. If it was a JPEG, it would flatten everything, but we want to keep those layers for now. So save it as a TIFF. Hit OK. And then take that and print that on the color printer. Okay.